Hey guys, it's Danielle with Take Care Mama. I am so excited to share my 2020 Plum Paper Planner with you. I think this is my fourth or fifth Plum Paper Planner. I love it. I want to thank them for sending me this planner. And I'll get right to it, but if you have never purchased from them before, I have a code for you. So check the description box below and I can get you that discount. Don't set up an account with them until you get your code for me. Once you set up an account, you're not considered a new customer. I've had that problem in the past. So just follow the directions and you'll be good to go. And without further ado, here is my planner. Here she is. She is so beautiful. I just got my initials and the date. This is an eight and a half by 11 size, which is their largest size. Last year, I went down to one of their smaller sizes and I really did not like that. So. I've had this size twice in the past and I'm happy to be back. When you first open up, there is just a spread of the years. And then there are two spreads with every month with a column. On this one, you are to write special dates. I don't use this a ton. This next one, you can kind of do the same thing, although they don't write the months. You can use this forever for whatever you want, but the idea is to put ideas, plans, and goals. I started this this month, December 2019, because I was so over my last planner. Um, so that's nice, you can, you can start it whenever you want. But we'll go to January. So the first page, and it's on this nice thicker paper, you write your three goals of the month, birthdays, events, things to remember. Then there is one line page where you can obviously do whatever you want with. And then the month at a glance, and then this untitled column that you can use for whatever you want. And then it's always nice, they do the next month down here in this column so you can see when the next month starts and what dates fall on which days. Okay, here is an example of a weekly spread I really prefer this vertical layout and I get seven different columns and you can either leave them blank or you can have the company print for you. So I switched it up a little bit this year. I have the top titled AM and the next one PM and I'm thinking I'm gonna use these first two columns as kind of like an hourly agenda. So if I have a meeting at eight, if from 10 to noon I want to get some work done, um, we have a dinner at 7, so on. The third column is house, that's meant to be for cleaning tasks, then fitness, then I have one for YouTube. New this year I added a whole section for Instagram, and then I also have a section for young living, my young living business. At the end of the month, I added this monthly cleaning page, which I really do use. I kind of do it differently than this. I do zone cleaning. I mean, I do it when I do it. Zone cleaning by how Jen does it. And so this is where I keep track of all of those kind of those deep cleaning things you do. Not every day, not every week, but more on a like a month basis or every few months. Okay. I got a bunch of different add-ons and last year and how I've always done it is there would be sections at the end of the planner. So it'd be like blog planning, um, blog planning, fitness planning, etc. This year you had the option to instead of giving getting a whole other section, you would just disperse the place pages at the ends of each month. And I really think I'm gonna prefer it this way so that way I can spend the majority of my time in this January month or whatever month it may be. So the first one is the blog planning section and I use this for YouTube. So important days, priorities to do, giveaways, and then I like this a lot. A bunch of squares to do some brainstorming. I use that all the time. Then on the other side of the page, you kind of have your formal blog schedule. So write, edit, post. For me, it is record, edit, post. And then some statistics. I don't understand 
what these are for. I haven't really figured that out. I don't know if it's like your own rating metric. Let me know if you have any ideas for that. And then statistics. I don't really keep, tr instead of doing target and actual, although I do have goals, I do like subscribers at the beginning of the month and then I record the subscribers at the end of the month so I can track my growth. This section is new for me. It's direct sales since I do Young Living. I'm not sure if this is gonna be helpful to me. I don't do my Young Living business like a lot of people. Like I don't host parties. I don't do things like that. I do it all on social media and only if people reach out to me. So like there's this whole party schedule section. I don't really do that. So we'll see how this goes. And then there's other things to keep track of on the other page. Fitness, I always get this, but again, this is the first time that it's not its own section. There's a page at the e end of each month. They changed this last year and I was excited about the change, but I didn't end up loving it. So I'm kind of sad they kept it the same, but there's a column for vitamins, sleep, steps, exercise, and water. I don't mind having all that, but I wish the vitamins and sleep and steps were more condensed because I find that I mainly use it for exercise and this isn't a lot of room to write that, but it's still good. You keep track of the month, your goal, any notes down here, and then pretty obvious, but I didn't mention there are 31 columns for each day. And then you can do some more goal work and at the end of the month kind of review how everything went. Now I also added on the meal planning section. For Unfortunately, you couldn't do this disperse, so I had to have it a whole separate section. I wish it could be like the other pages, but this is fine. And I love this. I have gotten this for years, so I don't really use this. It's kind of like information, favorite recipes. Again, like temperatures and measurements, I don't use this. So there are 12 spreads like this, one for each month. So we'll start with this page first, Monday through Sunday. I like that it starts on Monday because that's how I think of things. And then you write down your meal plan. This is week one, week two, week three, week four. And then on the corresponding page, there are four lists for your grocery items of that week. I actually recently posted one of my meal plans using the smaller planner, so I will link that above in the cards. At the end of the meal planning section, you can keep track of grocery stores. I never use that. Takeout restaurants, don't use that. And then this is kind of cool. I tried to do this last year, but it, I found it hard to keep track. But you keep track of your grocery bills for each week to kind of see how you're doing. So that is the meal plan section. I have a crabby baby in my hands. Not sure if you can hear her. So we're gonna wrap this up. And we have a dotted page, several dotted pages. This I find really helpful, though I'm sure it's super unsafe, but it is a password tracker, keeper. We have a My Contacts. I do not use this. I'd be surprised if a lot of people do. I think they should turn this into something else that could be kind of neat. And then another page of My Contacts. And then this is helpful, holidays and where they land. And then we look forward to the year 2021. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you liked this video and until next time, take care mama. Bye guys.